So now uh, we start off with Greg Sutcliffe. He's a, a, a community architect for Ansible at Red Hat, and he's going to tell us the state of the Ansible community. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let me let me get this mic'd up. Oh, applause! Always approve of applause. <laughs> so yes, uh, just to build just to build on that, we're going to do a little icebreaker card game thing, get to know each other a little better, right? Because I feel like all we ever see is GitHub handles and usernames in Matrix and on the forum and so on. And I'd like to know you all a bit better and know some of your backgrounds and stories. So I want to do that. We're going to do that this afternoon. So if that's of interest to you, you want to get to know your fellow contributors better, please stick around. OK, back to the topic of today. Let's talk about the community. I do this, well, I did it last year. And I've done this many times, right? And the talks always follow a fairly predictable format, because it's the state of the community, and there's only so many ways you can talk about the state of the community, right? Um, so we're going to do, we're going to look at the past year, uh, we're going to get some metrics in there, we're going to talk about data, talk about what we've achieved for the year. We're going to talk uh, about where we're at today. This is going to be interactive, so the people sitting far back might want to think about that, because you're going to have to shout. <laughs> I mean, I mean this quite sincerely. We don't get together often enough. It is not easy to organize these events. It is not easy to arrange travel. I am so pleased to see so many of you here. Uh, it is a massive, massive statement of support, uh, and I love it. And we should make use of it in the right way. Because if I wanted to just give you a lecture, I could just record it and put it on YouTube, right? That's not the valuable bit. The valuable bit is in the conversations that we have. And I want to capture some of that. Uh, we're going to have loads of conversations in the lobby and over dinner and things like this. But I want to at least capture some of that here in this talk and on that stream, right? So I will be asking you questions. Uh, have, a, have a think. And then I'm going to give you where I think we need to go this year. And I want to stress that it's me. The people here, including me, are not some secret deciding cabal, right? We, we are here as people who are interested in Ansible, and it's quite useful to get the temperature of things to understand what may or may not fly, but ultimately we have to take it back and discuss it at large, right? And so if you like what I say, and you think you agree with what I think needs to be done, then we all need to go and make more noise about it, right? Because that's how things happen. Uh, we, we can't just decide it here. It doesn't work like that, right? That's not how open source works. So I will give you my view on where I think we need to go. And if you like it, great. If you don't, well, tell me why. So the past, quite a big topic. Specifically, a year ago, I stood in this room and I showed you this slide. This is taken from last year's slides. These were the metrics that I showed, which cover, OK, the docs, most OK, but Reddit, Stack Overflow, mailing list traffic. And I said to you, this is not good. I said, where does Ansible talk? Because it isn't any of these places, apparently. They're all going down. And I don't believe that we should be in decline. There is still plenty of automation to be done. Okay. And I said, we need a plan to fix this. And I presented that plan, right? I just said, we don't make decisions here. And we didn't. I presented a plan. And then we took that plan back to the community. And over the course of February and March, we discussed it. And we agreed that we should do it, right? And the first part and main part of that plan was that we built the forum. Who's got an account on the forum, on the new Ansible forum? Ooh. That's more than half the room. I'll take that. That's good. <laughs> so if you're not already familiar, this launched in September. Uh, it looked like this. And if that looks familiar to you, it's because I think nearly all open source projects seem to be using discourse now. And I wholeheartedly approve, because I really love discourse. I've been doing community management for uh, eight years, at least. And I've been involved in communities for longer. Discourse gets so many things right. And they're hard things to put in like your pros and cons argument for why you should use a forum versus why you should use something else. Because they're all little things, right? There's no killer feature there that says, this, this one thing is why you should do it. No, it doesn't work like that. It's just nicely engineered software that achieves its goal of bringing communities together in a good way. Now, I get there are people who love mailing lists, but I have bad news for you. <laughs> so um, I wanted to say a little bit about how well this has taken off, right? And how, how, how the community is adopting it. And that involves me looking at some metrics. Now, I can't, obviously, having only released it in September, I can't give you the metrics compared to last year. It didn't exist, right? So I have to find some other comparisons to use. 
And so the first one I thought, well, the obvious comparison is how we're we doing against mailing lists, right? So because Google Groups is, I'm being recorded, not great, <laughs> I had to go and hand count all of the emails that went to the mailing list in the UI in January. And the answer is 159. It looks like this. Now, the eagle-eyed among you will spot an interesting fact about this graph. There is a lot of space above that graph. That's not an accident, because then I plotted the forum traffic on top. So in something that's been around for less than five months, we now have six times the traffic from the mailing list that's been around 10 years, right? This is no accident, right? But hey, it's just the mailing list. Maybe Ansible people are somewhere else, right? Maybe Stack Overflow? So this is, it turns out Stack Overflow have an SQL query explorer that you can go and play with, and you don't even need to be logged in to use it. I'm like, wow, their query protections must be amazing. But you can, so I wrote a query, right, that says, tell me all of the posts, uh, all of the questions tagged Ansible, okay? And then I can just bucket those up by month. So this is 2023. How have we done? Remember, this launched in September, right? So looks like that. <laughs> so already, we have double the sort of traffic we're seeing on Stack Overflow for people asking questions, getting help on Ansible. That's pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. There's one more we could look at. Reddit, okay. Now this one's a bit trickier. I don't have graphs for this one because it's hard to do direct comparisons. Um, Reddit doesn't give you anywhere near the same kind of metrics that I get out of Discourse. There's different ways of using them, right? But I can give you some rough idea of what's going on. So. Reddit gets about 500k or so page views a month. We're currently getting about 100k a month on Discourse. Now, I don't like page views as a metric because it's not unique page views, right? It will have crawlers and things in it and so on. Um, turns out it's quite hard to do the, uh, the unique page views comparison for various reasons. Um, so we'll do page views, but that's not great. Let's look at users. Reddit gets about 6k unique users a day, which is insane. Um, but OK, we only get like 100 or so users a day. But remember, it's not the same 100 each day, right? So we still get like a couple of thousand people looking at the, the forum over the course of a month. So that's less. That's considerably less. However, Reddit only gets minus 5 to 10 posts a day, whereas Discourse is getting about 30 a day. So we've got far less users, but they're far more active. If you ratio those, right, you're getting about, what's that, 6K into 600K and five posts a day, it's like a few posts per person, right? Whereas Discourse, it's more like 30 posts per person, right? So it's, much, it's a tighter group, but it's more active. It's a lot more active, a lot more interaction, more discussion, right? Reddit, I feel like it's very light. You go, you have a look, you maybe say one thing, and then you move on, right? So we're getting that tighter group, we're getting more interaction. There's some more you can put onto this. Um, I did some numbers for how Red Hat interacts with this, because I think that's of interest to everybody, right? Um, it's actually really good. About one third of the traffic is coming from Red Hat email addresses. So that's actually, in my opinion, that's like really, really good. That's like the sweet spot. I don't want it to be zero, right? I don't want us ignoring it. And I don't want it to be like over 60% and us doing all of the talking, right? Because then we're not listening to everybody else and we're dominating the whole thing. No, one third, perfect, love it. It gets even better when you look at where that traffic goes because very little of it goes to the help category. Actually, all of the community are now becoming quite self-supporting and answering questions and getting resolutions done. And most of our traffic is going into the project discussions category, which is really, really nice because again, Whilst I do not subscribe to this view, there is a view that says if we spend all of paid, uh, any company spends all of its paid time on people just asking support questions, they're not getting anywhere, right? But that's not what's happening here. The community is looking after itself and getting things moving, getting people unstuck, getting them using Ansible. Love it. Absolutely love it. So, as a whole, as a whole, I think the forum has been a success. It will, it will grow. I mean, bear in mind, this is five months old, and it's not even properly indexed by Google yet because we've had a problem with the domain verification. So even without people being able to find this stuff on Google, we're still getting this level of traffic. Now, I'm really, really happy with that, and I'm really, ha really excited to see where we can go with it and make it the, the central point. I, I stood in this room a year ago, and I said we have 400 GitHub repositories, 30 chat rooms, 
eight mailing lists and nowhere for people to go and talk about Ansible, <laughs> right? <laughs> because, because you could start one conversation somewhere and the people who need to see it aren't seeing it, right? We, can, we have fixed that problem, now we just need to get everybody using it, right? Um, because it's there, it's that one place where we can all go and talk about everything and hopefully get the right eyeballs on the things that need to be seen and talked about. So, I'm super happy with how that launched. I want to just quickly pause and talk about GitHub. I said there were 400 repos, it's now more like 500 repos. Um, I meant to take that line out, oops. <laughs> the 300 was a different metric and it shouldn't be, it's not directly comparable. Um, it's gone from about 400 actually, not 300, up to 520. This is what I index for my statistics. So that is anything under an Ansible organization on GitHub, so Ansible, Ansible Community, Ansible Collections, Ansible Security, all those organizations, plus all the collections in the community package. So if you've got a collection in your GitHub org, but it's included in Ansible, I'll index that one as well. And so that's ridiculous number of GitHub repos, which is why we have so much trouble communicating with each other. However, last year, I said those metrics were going down. Um, so we had a drop in unique contributors last year, not this year, it's gone up very, very slightly. Now that's a very, very lightweight kind of Definition is literally you open an issue and you'll be in that stat, right? So it's a very big number, but it has gone up, uh, which I like. We've had more issues, whether or not that's a good thing, <laughs> I leave up to your conscience. Um, but that number was 18% down from 2022 to 2023. Now it's up 6% this year. So there's at least, you can safely say there's more activity. And similarly, uh, PRs, that was down, I think, 6% last year, now up 13%. Again, does that mean they got merged? No, that's PRs opened. But, I mean, I could, you can cut a million statistics out of this data, right? I have to pick something. Uh, the one thing I'm a little concerned about, um, people who've seen me speak before will know I have a definition of an active contributor, which has quite a strict threshold. It's to do with sustained activity over time. It's a time decayed, exponential time decay, so that um, activity you did two years ago doesn't count anywhere near as much as activity you did two months ago. It's quite a, quite a strict definition. By that definition, we have lost contributors again this year. Um, but maybe my thresholds are wrong, right? Maybe we're spreading out, you know, there's 100 more repos to look at. Maybe I need to bring the threshold down and I'll see a different story, right? Because it's quite strict. So I, I'm not super happy about that one, but against the backdrop of everything else that's going on, it's definitely better than when I stood here last year and said, everything's in decline, right? It's not true anymore. Things have definitely improved. So I'm super happy about that. Um, I was gonna do a, talk, uh, do, do a slide about uh, where we're at with the chat side of things. Uh, and so I'm just gonna skip that one. <laughs> because honestly, I want the forum to be the focus here. By the time you need to know which chat room you want to be in, you should already be part of the community at that point, right? There's 30 plus chat rooms, and if you knew, know you need to be in the community working group or in Ara's room or in the release managers group, then you already have interacted with people at that point. As a call to action, the forum is where it needs to be at. So, that's numbers. I don't just want to do numbers. I mean, I, that's kind of my job, but I want to give you a little more high level. We have been very busy as a community. I mean, the forum was my baby, and so I absolutely wanted to talk lots about that, but that would be unfair to all of you and to the rest of the people I work with on a daily basis. And so it's fair to, to, to talk about some of the other things. So we have done the forum. The other thing I talked about last year was uh, a new community website. That's not gone as smoothly as I would have liked. <laughs> It is still coming. Um, the prize is worth the wait. We have been promised Ansible.com. My information says it's still going to happen. I just keep seeing the date being moved back. I'm told it's still coming. That is the best I can do with that. But, this, but the actual new site, the community site, is ready. My colleague Don, who's running the room next door, has done most of the work on that in conjunction with a bunch of other people. Um, and it's there, it's, it's ready. So we just need the go ahead, right? We've done a lot of work on docs. Uh, so Don, Sandra, a few others have been re-educating, re uh, re redesigning the documentation. So if you've seen the new ecosystem page, that's all their idea. If you've been looking at anything to do with, with how it's structured, lots of new stuff to do with user journeys. Uh, Don has a talk on that later. So uh, go and see his talk if you want to know more about that. We have been working to get all of our individual project documentation under read the docs. Uh, the idea here is 
there should be, you should get something for wanting to, as a maintainer of a project, you should get something for wanting to be part of our ecosystem, right? There, there, there should be, there should be some table stakes, and then you should get something for your efforts in meeting those table stakes. And so one of the things we can now say is, well, you can have a subdomain under our Ansible read the docs, and we can all have consistent like documentation across all the various individual projects, uh, and that helps you to feel like you're part of the wider thing, right? So that's, that's now available and can be done. We have built a Meetup Toolkit, so that was, that was Anwish's work. Uh, the idea here is that Meetups have suffered, okay? It's been a rough few years for events in general, right? And it's difficult to get that going again. And so one of the, one, a couple of things we're doing here is, firstly, to allow Meetup organizers to, to learn from each other. So uh, we're trying to help Meetup organizers get to know each other, have a space to talk privately, share ideas and thoughts. But then on top of that, there's the Meetup Toolkit, which gives you some help with looking for venues, soliciting speakers, figuring out who's going to sponsor you for pizza, that kind of stuff, right? So if you're interested in, in taking on an existing Meetup or starting a new one, this is for you. Um, I briefly mentioned execution environments. If you haven't already seen these, um, the best person to talk to, sadly, has already gone home because uh, he, he, uh, he has to go back. Um, but that was Andre. Um, he's, he's been working to get execution environments, which have been a very downstream focused thing for a while to, to be more uh, available to the community and more useful to the community, so that's true. We've been doing a lot of packaging work, so you may not know that until quite recently, the Ansible community package built by the steering committee and, and, and orchestrated by them still needed Red Hat involvement to be released, which is kind of not great. <laughs> uh, and so this year we've had the chance to fix that and to make it so that the community can release the package. And that has happened. So I think Max has done two, three releases now, Felix? Yeah, something like that. So that's, that's really, really nice. I'm really, really glad uh, that, that we're unblocking that kind of stuff and taking the gatekeeping away. Because where the community is already making the decisions, they should also be able to do the release. It's just doesn't make sense, right? And then I just, I just wanted to sum up one last thing. I, I wanted to put a number on how many releases we've had this year. And I started counting them. And I kind of just gave up. Because when you look at core, DevTools, AWX, EDA, all the collections, the community packages, I, I was just like, nope, nope, not going to be able to do this. So I went with the hero. As, as, as in time-honored traditions of, of data scientists and, and, and statisticians, I just guessed. <laughs> by, by which I mean there are about three or four announcements of releases in every single edition of the Bullhorn. And if you multiply that by 52 weeks, then you get about 200 releases, right? So, so there's been a lot of activity. And that's everybody here and everybody watching on the stream and all the community, like that's just an enormous amount of work that goes into the Ansible community. It's just astonishing. So thank you so much for all of your efforts over the past year. Um, the fact that these numbers are much better than the numbers that I put here last year are mostly down to all of you. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy with that. As, as a, a look back over the year, I think that's pretty good, right? If I, if I look at that, it's better than last year. The forum's doing really well. If you're not already on the forum, please do. <laughs> please, please, please come and, come and use it um, because it is going to be the place. It is going to be the place. And I'll talk about where I want the forum to go in the future part of the talk, right? Not in the past. Um, GitHub is recovering. The stats are better than last year. Some areas not still not great. I just want to point out, we got two tracks. In fact, we actually kind of got three tracks, I've just learned, because I'd forgotten that there are talks in some of the other tracks as well. That did not happen last year. Right? So that alone is just an immense statement of, of where we've come to and, and hopefully keep it going. I, I stood here a year ago and said we should not be declining. And I think I've been proved right <laughs> because the problems were structural, not that the pro project is no longer useful. Right? So that's good. Um, yeah, active contributors, still a concern. Um, I'm a little concerned about project discussion. The help section of the forum is doing really well. I had a, a contributor come to me privately on a private message and said, hey, is the project discussion section like Red Hat only? Because it kind of feels like it is. And, and inside, I, it just it broke my heart, right? Because I'm like, you're not reading the room wrong, but it shouldn't be like that, right? And so that's something I would like, uh, I would like and I'll talk, talk more about that in a moment. And I've just had a look at my slides and realized the thing I wanted to do did not render very well. <laughs> so I am going to come over here. 
So we're going to do we're going to do a bit about the present now. So that's the past, that's the statistics, that's the year we've had. So now I want to talk. I do a little bit of an interactive thing. So what I'm going to do, assuming I can move my mouse cursor over here, I have got a completely blank slide. It's fantastic. Um, I'm going to shout out some questions, and I have. I've got my my uh, kin my uh, remarkable here, which uh, I'm betting this isn't going to work now because <laughs> it's gone to sleep. Go it's gone, gone to oh no, it is working! Yay! There we go. Um, uh, it helps if I uh, if I turn it back into pen mode, right, rather than selection mode. Um, okay, so I've got I've got my notepad here. I'm going to write hello up here. Uh, so I've got some questions. I want some shout outs. Don't feel shy. If you're shy, I'll just ask you again. <laughs> um, I want to get some feedback. I said this session should be more interactive, that we should have a discussion, right? So let's start with some, some fairly easy questions. Someone, someone tell me what Ansible means to you. Give me some one word answers here. What, what, what does Ansible mean to you? Come on, go on, David. Easy and straightforward automation. Easy automation, okay, I'm gonna write that down. Anyone else agree with that? Yeah, we've got some hands up back there. Yeah, I've got, got, got four or five people here, okay. Easy automation, my handwriting's awful. Um, okay, so I saw like I saw like five people for that, right? <laughs> Someone else, come on. Declarative code. So sorry. De declarative code, yeah. Infrastructure as code, maybe. Yeah. Let's let's see, because this is easier to write. <laughs> um, anyone else agree with that? That's useful. That, that that fits the picture. Yeah, yeah. Got a few. Got a couple there. Go ahead. We're also doing quite complex automations. You're doing a complex. Okay, not just easy, but also complex. Okay, yeah, also complex. Good. Okay. Um, what else? Easily extendable. It's extendable. Okay, I like that. All right. Okay. Okay. I I don't want to spend like twenty minutes on one question, so this is good. All right. Uh, that's not how you spell it, but extendable. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, even the the rubbing out works with this WebSockets thing, so this is cool. Um, so okay. Um, what? Here's, here's one I'm really interested in. Right? What is your relationship to Ansible? Again, one word. I'll give you some examples. It might be a user. Contributor, developer, create, content creator. Uh, these, these are all things you might do within the Ansible world, right? So uh, who wants to shout out something in, in terms of their relationship to Ansible? Integrate. <laughs> well, you're integrated into Ansible. What, you have chips? Ansible. <laughs> you're an integrator. OK, yeah, sure. So would, would that put you down as, a, as you'd say, an Ansible developer, basically? Something like that. Bit, bit of everything, yeah, OK. That's, I can't write bit of everything on here, Dad. Come on. <laughs> So I, I could point at Felix, right? And you, I know Felix is a contributor, right? So that's one. Um, all right, let's do a show of hands up. Who would consider themselves at least a user of Ansible? I mean, good, the whole room, right? So I'm seeing 20, 30 people. Um, what about an Ansible developer? That doesn't mean you're publishing code on GitHub, but maybe you're working on it internally. Yeah, so not just people doing Ansible Galaxy and then run it, right? So you're writing some Ansible code of your own. So that's a slightly smaller number. So I had what I had. So, so for user, I had like 30 people. And then for dev, I think we were down to about 20 there. What about contributor? Someone who pushes code back upstream again? Yeah, we're down to about 10 people there. <laughs> OK, fair enough. Huh? Oh, Mark, I, I missed our AV guy, because he's off on, out of my line of sight, you see. This is the problem. Um, OK, so that's not. That's a very large eye, but whatever. <laughs> Contributor. So we had about 10 people there. And I guess I don't really know. Who maintains things? I don't you do. You do. Uh, OK, so we got like four or five people doing maintain it. OK, that's cool. Uh, the reason I'm still writing this out, even though we've already answered the question, is that I'm not deleting these, right? I'm taking these notes home. <laughs> so, OK, let me get a new page. Uh, I have to refresh this to get a new page. Otherwise, it will write over the top. OK, so. How much time have I got left? I've got plenty of time. Shall I go good or bad? Not the good one or the bad one? Let's go for the good one. Tell me your favorite Ansible thing. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Ansible has no favorite things. OK. <laughs> hmm? Kausei. Kausei, OK. Oh, Someone oh, had to oh, say oh, Kausei. Oh, All right, OK. <laughs> Kausei, we've got one vote for that. <laughs> go on. Ginger templates. Ginger templates, OK, fantastic. So ginger. The amount of Lots modules. Of modules. Yeah. Right. <laughs> that was the one I was expecting. <laughs> we had a couple of people say templates. Uh, modules. Yes. Uh, modules is is one thing, but also just um, content content um, like the content quantity, right? Okay. Cool. Yeah. A lot of people agreeing with that one. Go on, David. Top down execution. Top down execution. Okay. I don't know. I agree with you on that one. Well, 
Well, so the way the way that I mean is coming from a world of puppet, where you write stuff and you don't really know in what order the things will execute. Oh, so order of execution. Order of execution. No, okay, that I agree with. <laughs> so in Ansible, you write things and they execute in the order that you wrote them. It's okay, order of execution. Yeah, yeah, that's fair enough. If you want them to. If you. <laughs> Anyone else? Or shall I? Oh, go on, Kevin. Very highly specific, but being able to set host variables in group inventory files. Okay. I just recently learned about. Host bars. Completely changed the way I in inventory now. It's going to make very, very <laughs> lot of that's a lot of writing. Don't do that. <laughs> Dynamic inventory. Dynamic inventory. Yep. Okay. Cool. All right. I think I filled the page there. That's good. I love it. Late oh. substitution. All right. Okay. I'll come back. Hang on. <laughs> I'll write this one as well. Late substitution. Okay. Cool. It's interesting, no, one, no one's going outside of core Ansible here and talking about EDA or AWX or anything like this. <laughs> I'll tell that. <laughs> so, okay, now you know what I'm going to ask for the next one, right? <laughs> What's the worst thing? What's the biggest pain point? <laughs> Excellent. You are, you are absolutely a balanced sample. Thank you very much. <laughs> My statistician brain is very happy. <laughs> Gene, your template. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I give you the perfect balance sample. <laughs> All right, I, I'm, I'm going to write it down. You said it. You could just copy the previous page. I mean, how many of these are also the worst thing? Ah, uh, <laughs> no, come on. There's got to be something different. What's that, Felix? It's pretty slow. Pretty slow. Okay, yeah. slow. Yeah. It's a error handling. Mm -hmm. error. error handling. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Especially if it's ginger templates. You can put the ginger templates in the worst too. Uh, you see, I don't have to do writing. I can do this as well. Yeah. <laughs> collection breakage. Uh, within a collection, or like uh, version dependencies, like things like well, just, just in general. New guys coming in, breaking everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, do you mean do you mean in where you work or in the community? <laughs> Yeah, the fix. <coughs> the fix is reverted with the guy not knowing what he's doing. Uh, okay, all right. Collection, collection breakage. Okay, fine. Yeah. And what else? I got, I got one more question for you. So give me, give me one more if you want. Are we allowed to say uh, 2023 Galaxy? As yes, <laughs> yes, you can say that. So Galaxy NG. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna qualify that though, Kevin. Do you mean, do you mean the release of it or where it's at now? <laughs> I haven't looked at it in six months because I've got tired of it. Okay, so, so for the, so for Kevin's benefit, then the new Galaxy NG released in September, um, so it's been completely replaced. And no, that, that's, well, okay, that's the one I'm referring. To. Okay, so people lost roles and the repos weren't linked correctly. So before. yeah, it was painful. I don't think anyone would deny that. I think what it, what was done, re okay, so it was released on a weekend, which I didn't agree with. <laughs> Once the Galaxy team got underneath the fire hose um, and started interacting with the community on the forum about it, things started getting better fairly quickly. And I think at this point, they fixed pretty much all of the issues that were causing major pain, and they're now starting to like get feedback on new features for it from the community as well. And they've, they are one of the teams, along with AWX, who have been very happy with being able to interact with users more directly than you would have done through something like GitHub. Um, and that's, that's something they've, they've fed back to me that internally and saying that's actually made their lives <laughs> It wasn't fun for anyone, right? But it made it easier for them to like get on top of things and make sure people were getting the support they needed and to move it forward. So yes, I think we can all agree the release of Galaxy NG was not ideal. <laughs> but hey, I've got to do the politics thing, right? <laughs> so, um, but it's definitely in a better state now. Um, I'm definitely seeing, so one of the little things I love about Discourse is all the data I get that I wouldn't be able to get from a mailing list, right? And I can see the click-through rates on, say, Galaxy topics or how many people are putting Galaxy NG as a search into the search bar. And that was obviously off the charts for about a month. And now it's, it's dropped back down to where it was before. So I think, I hope it'll settle down. If it hasn't, this is why we need to talk more, right? Okay, um, where am I at for time? I'm going to stop there for pain points. I think, Phil, do you have one? Do you want to, add, uh, want to add something? My point was about Galaxy NG that still is missing on the statistics part. Is that if, if you want to look at the statistics, you still have to go to the... Right, I know they know about that. Yeah, I know they know about that, but yeah. yeah. Okay, um, how much time have I got? Mm, okay, I'm going to maybe do... I might... I was... 
Ah, uh, it's tight for time. All right, my last one was going to be basically just tell me a story, right? <laughs> because that could go on a while, so please don't take forever. But if someone wants to tell me, particularly like a contribution story or an experience from the community side of it rather than the development side, I'd be interested to hear it if anyone's got one. Give it two. Go on once. <laughs> okay, we'll move on then. And if you want to tell me that stuff in the bar afterwards when you're not being recorded, then fine. So, um, okay, I've got pages and pages of notes here, which is really, really good. Um, I'm going to bring this back over here and skip that broken slide that t totally uh, did not work and you will never see it. And, uh, this is really, really useful. And what I want to see is how can we translate what we just did back to when we go home, right? Because we do this once a year, and it's nowhere near enough. Like you saw the, number, the, the stats earlier. We have hundreds, if not thousands, depending on how you count it, of contributors. And the, most of them are not here in this room or in this conference venue attending other talks, right? So if I want to get a picture of what's working for the community and what's not working for the community, whilst this is immensely valuable, it's not scalable, right? And we need to work out how to fix that. So, what do I want to see? Um, this is my view, as I've said. If you like what I put here, A, come and tell me, but also B, go and make noise about it in the community, on the forum, preferably, uh, because I think this is where we need to go. So firstly, I want to see consolidation. We did a lot of stuff last year. You saw that list. Um, some of it is still unfolding, like the website. Um, I don't want to see us bringing even more new things into that mix this year. It's not going to help, right? It's just going to confuse everybody. So what we're doing is working, um, but we do need to give it time and to standardize on it and to make it more useful to everybody. Um, so I don't want to see new community tooling this year, I, unless it's like fixing a specific problem or something, obviously. But, but in general, I don't want us to say, oh, no, forums didn't work. Now we're going to go and use Zulip. No, that's not what we need to do, right? That's not going to happen. Or at least I don't think it's going to happen anyway. Maybe you'll prove me wrong. <laughs> um, I want to see more discussion. I just said that. I'm particularly keen to make the forum the center of this because it's the only place we've got where everybody can participate in one place. Right? And people come to me and they say, well, OK, but what about GitHub? And I'm like, well, there's hundreds of GitHub repos. There should be a place to come and say, is this just me doing this wrong? Or have I actually found a bug? Or what's the best practice for doing this? Or I have an idea. I keep hitting this problem. Can we fix it? Those things, you never entirely know which GitHub repo to go and open that issue in. And most of the time, if you give people too much choice, they will just choose not to do it. right? And that means we miss out on feedback and we miss out on information. So as far as I'm concerned, the call to action always is, you're interested? Go to the forum. <laughs> that's, that's the bottom line, because that will scale. right? We have all the tags we need, we have all the categories we need. It's already self-supporting. It's already larger than all of our other channels anyway. Let's do that. That seems like a good idea. I mean, help and support, as I said, is already doing well. It's self-sustaining. People are doing really good work. And I'm seeing people in there who, I mean, I asked that question earlier of how do you identify within the Ansible community. There are people who will never show up in GitHub. Right? They consider themselves to be users. They know a lot about how to use Ansible. They are not going to come and talk to you on GitHub, right? That's not what they do. That's not what they want to do. But you give them a space to come and be experts in their knowledge, and they will do that, and they are already doing that. Right? And the people that I see as most active in the early phase of the forum were people that I did not have in my stats from anywhere else. Um, and so I think that's really interesting, and I would like to see more people and more people we know well coming in and being part of it. However, I do think we need to do a better job of mm, Sorry, my voice is going. We do need to do a better job how we discuss the project as a whole. The help bit is fine, but whilst I see AWX and I see Galaxy NG and I see some of DevTools coming in and saying, hey, we're thinking about these things, I want to see more of that. And I also want to see more feedback when that happens. So I think one of the problems we've had for a long time, and we are not in any way unique in this problem that happens to a lot of communities, is we've kind of reached a position where we don't talk to each other, right? So the problem is, is that if people working on the code side say, hey, we've got a feature idea, but nobody replies to it, then they stop posting. They say, why would I bother, right? But equally, if people with ideas and the users and the people who've got the best practices come and say, hey, I, I keep hitting this problem. Can we fix it? And the devs don't engage with it. 
Well, that doesn't get any better either. So we've got a situation where people are neither talking nor listening a lot of the time. It's getting better. AWX are leading the charge on that, I think. But we need more of that, okay? And that's something I really want to try and drive. And there's good tooling here, right? So, so the forum tooling is really, really good for this with the groups and the voting. Um, I'm pushing CDCK, the people who make discourse, to make it even better in this regard. There are certain things I want that don't exist at the moment, but hey, they're another great open source company and project and we can work with them, right? So, and this is stuff that will benefit other groups. Fedora, for example, have a huge discourse and I want, it would benefit them as well. A lot, if you've, is anyone on the Fedora discourse out of interest? Okay, so if you're not already on the Ansible one, it'll look very familiar <laughs> because I borrowed a lot of their structure. Um, but it, it, it has some consequences. So I, I, wanna, I wanna see us do this better. And finally, this is the sort of thing that I'll be working on specifically because it's up to everybody else to go and make more use of the forum, right? I built it, my bit's done. Um, but I want to do more recognition. I think if, if I think about community as a whole, of course I want more of it, more of everything, right? But where do I think there's actually space to get more of it? Well, you saw the numbers for, for GitHub and for the number of PRs and issues. We can't double that. That's not going to happen. But can we double the amount of feedback and information and best practices and stuff we're talking about? Yeah, because there's almost none of it. <laughs> so that's where I think we can do better and do better really, really well, right? So I'm interested in how we recognize that work because we're really good at counting code and saying, hey, you've done loads of pull requests. We're really, really not good at saying, hey, you've done loads of speaking, you've done 10 meetups you've contributed loads of blog posts, all of the other stuff that is still contribution, we don't recognize it. We have no way for someone to say, I know what I'm talking about with Ansible, you should give me a job, <laughs> right? I think that has value. Does that have value to people? To be able to say, I know what I'm talking about in Ansible? I'm seeing a lot of nodding back there, yes. Okay, good. Thank you, because otherwise I'm getting a little worried that this plan isn't gonna work, right? <laughs> so. I definitely want to hear more stories. I would love us to do some interviews. I've heard so many use cases while I've been at FOSDEM and, and this morning as well. You know, I, people come to me and say, hey, I use Ansible for deploying like robotics. And I'm like, why do you not come and tell me this more often? <laughs> it's like, there's this prevailing assumption that everybody uses Ansible the same way. And it's just, it's just not true, right? But we need to hear it and we need to publish it. And that goes back to the website story and being able to actually publish things and so on, right? I want it. To be ever easier to participate, that's just a un universal statement of all open source projects, right? But hopefully, forum's dead easy to get involved in. You can sign in with GitHub. The sign in with Google should work eventually. It doesn't at the moment, but no. um, So, you know, you don't have to go and work very hard for this. And then I want to recognize these contributions. That's, that's what I've just said. Um, to this end, I have a very specific goal in mind for this. Um, if you have used Discourse, you will recognize this kind of thing. These are forum badges, which a lot of people will frown on and go, ah, I don't like gamification. Okay, fine. I get you. I don't particularly care about campaigner. This is not massively useful to me, right? Um, but you'll notice in there there's a Fostem badge and a contributor speaker badge from last year and a configuration camp badge from this very morning. I want more of these badges. I want you to be able to say, I have had 50 solutions accepted by the community. I have done five talks at Ansible events. I have written a best practices guide, whatever they might be. There aren't many of these badges yet because we're just getting started with this. But I hope this is the sort of thing that will be useful to people to be able, I mean, there's a reason things like Badger and Credly have taken off. I just don't like the idea of a proprietary solution for an open source community, right? So I'm like, okay. Well, Fedora solved this like 15 years ago. <laughs> let's, let's see if we can do the same thing, right? Only I don't have the infrastructure, so we'll build it on top of discourse. It makes sense. This is where I want to go. I want more of these badges. I want to recognize the work that people do, and then you can take those badges as a, this, is, this was taken, by the way. Um, OK, you can see the admin button, so I was clearly logged in. But, but it is a public page. And there's potential for doing a nicer view on top of this. Like, there's obviously a full API, so we could have like a proper Ansible badges thing where you can embed that in your LinkedIn profile or whatever, right? That's something I want to do more of. So if you have ideas for ways to recognize things, things we might not have thought of, work that you've done that you think you've not been recognized for, 
tell me, because A, I want to make sure we thank you, but also we can make sure we thank everybody else that's doing it as well. And, and then there's not just badges, right, because like there's all the groups and flares and so on that go with that, so you know, you get your steering committee flare if you're on that and so on and so forth. So I definitely want to see the forum as the home of everything, just because it makes sense. If we're trying to get everybody there anyway, that might as well also be the place we do the recognition. All right, makes sense. So um, that's basically about time. We're hitting about 40 minutes. and. Thank you. Um, if you have any questions or comments, um, you can obviously find me over the next couple of days. And I will take questions in a minute while we have a few minutes spare. Um, but you can also email. Um, you obviously can go to the forum. <laughs> That's my username, um, Gungilvan, since everyone asked me how to pronounce it. Um, or you can come and scan my badge. And you can PM me there, and we can have a chat. Um, or, of course, there's Matrix as well. Uh, you can get me on Matrix and talk about that. Sadly, of course, that means you can't get me on IRC because we don't have a bridge anymore, but such is life. Okay, um, thank you very much. Oh, two lots of thanks. Well, thank you twice. <laughs> okay, we've got five minutes. Go on, David. Oh, we have a mic? We have a mic. Okay. I think the water, water's almost lasted. Um, you kind of got uh, ahead of me there. Uh, what about the lack of IRC bridge? Or, or what's the plan for the bridge or lack thereof? Burn all the bridges? <laughs> uh, sadly, we didn't start the fire. <laughs> um, that's an awkward question, and you know it. <laughs> so the short answer is we'll need to have a conversation about that. And the reason we haven't had a conversation about that is because we've not had the place to have the conversation about that. Now we do. And the only reason I haven't started that conversation yet is because I knew we were coming here anyway and we might as well like test the water and chat a bit, right? But yes, I would say in the near future we need to have a discussion about that. My personal take, which is what I will happily put on the forum, is that with, that being the with the forum being the central call to action, chat is less important as a starting point for the community. By the time you know which of those 30 rooms on any system that you want to be in, you're already talking to those people anyway, and you'll know where you need to join. Uh, and I feel like that's a better entry point, and we should push our documentation in that direction, rather than trying to resolve a conflict that will never be resolved because everyone's got their favorite tool. Um, if you want me to absolutely pick a side, you already know what the answer is. <laughs> but that's not how this works, right? <laughs> Anyone else? All right. Well, thank you very much. I'll see you at the booth. Oh, before you clap, since we have badges, and you will have noticed that we have got the Config Management Camp badge, you can get this badge right now. All you have to do is come down the booth and scan the QR code, and you can have the badge. I will only work today and tomorrow, though, so time <laughs> limited. After that, I shut down the ter terribly terrible Python Flask app that I wrote last week. <laughs> thank you very much. Here's the speaker.